but not least is the uh, inaugural conference on the future of Europe. Uh, this was an event in Strasbourg on May 9. And it was as uh, fun and uh, jovial and exciting as a European Union event could possibly get, which has not at all. Uh, but, but it wasn't, um, it wasn't like deadly bad. It was like, it was just whatever. Um, it is important though. So uh, it opened on May 9 uh, in Strasbourg on Europe Day. And it's this like year long forum that's going to be open digitally for people to participate in discussions about Europe. Um, the uh, the forum has been open for a while. Uh, but it's kind of this is like the year for when Europe really like these like European Union um, efforts are very kind of clearly steering people towards uh, a discussion about uh, civic engagement and getting more people to engage and specifically they're uh, they're talking about uh, European youth so they want to mobilize kind of young people to engage uh, as European citizens which is not necessarily the way that people are, uh, of uh, previous generations have tended to engage in the European Union um, but studies show uh, time and time again that um, Millennials and uh, uh, Zoomers uh, tend to identify first and foremost as Europeans and second as whatever uh, sovereign country they belong to um, so it's not surprising that this would be the natural progression of a lot of talks and discussions in the European Union and this is definitely a part of a trend to try and mold a path uh, to federalism. Um, and although they don't state it outright, and in fact, the, the person who was gonna be at the helm of this um, whole forum was Guy Verhofstadt, who is a major federalist in the European Union, the author of the United States of Europe. Uh, but they decided not to have him as like the, the face of this event because uh, they thought it would be a little bit too kind of a little bit too obvious what was going on but it's clear that they, they, they want to have like more of a narrative about uh, civil belonging uh, civic belonging and uh, citizenship um, and it's a way to test out the waters too for uh, for, for the future it's certainly Ursula von der Leyen uh, says has said many times already that she see, the future is federalist she wants a federal Europe she said like every second speech she gives is like uh oh you know maybe i won't live to see the day but my grandchildren will live in the united states of europe like you know it's clear that there's like a, a federalist bias uh, which i love because i'm a federalist too i think that is the future and i think uh, the sooner it happens the better um one concern you could have about this forum is that it is again highly exciting to use which is not at all um is very clunky it's um uh it may not be like galvanizing people in the right ways so it might not be a representative sample of the population who actually engage with it because you can ask questions you can interact as europeans blah 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 um and it may not always be the target audience you want you'll have like different types of engagement throughout the different countries so there's like countries that have been kind of traditionally feeling feeling the feels for Europe a little bit more than others. You might have, you know, uh, Hungary, um, which is uh, under the rule of a crazy uh, of crazy uh, dictator Orban, who does all kinds of weird things with uh, media legislation and things like that. Um, and propaganda in this country where, you know, maybe the, the engagement will not be as high there. And then maybe these opinions will not be heard. But from my cynical from my cynical perspective um no one's gonna like no one really wants to listen to what people have to say this is just an exercise in um in compliance this is a um consultation this is democratic consultation being seen to be made and it's a way to feel out whether there's going to be a lot of opposition in a decade from now when we become the united states of europe will a lot of people hate it or will uh will uh, I don't know, my generation and the younger generations, will they uh, accept it, basically? Uh, like, how many people need to die out bef before we're able to do that, to do this? And, um, that's usually, like, 
that's usually a pretty political question. Like how many, like how many people need to die? Like which generation is going to be able to take something? Like who is the first generation who's going to be okay with the major change? Who needs to die before we do this? This is a dark, dark space I'm inhabiting tonight. Um, but it's true. It's true uh, of a lot of like situations. Um, where it's like, you know, certain generations are just not prepared for something. Um, and it's not their fault. It's just because they've been fed a specific type of propaganda and then the propaganda changes and like the problem is like a whole population who have been indoctrinated in one particular way. Um, but yeah, so I think like the, the, the rumblings in Europe are definitely that we're heading towards a federalist, federalist Europe. There's a few hiccups on the way, like crazy Polish dictator, uh, the crazy, um, President Duda of Poland, the crazy uh, dictator of Hungary, but these are characters that come and go, you know, uh, they've done as much damage as they possibly could. They've both been in power for a long time. Eventually, they will dissipate and, and the more federal Europe becomes, uh, the less power these people will have over policy and the people of, in these countries. Um, so the human rights situation will improve. I can't believe I'm saying that, like, about the European Union. There's countries in the European Union where where uh, the human rights situation is yet to improve. But it's true. So you should participate in this forum. Uh, let me know if you like it, even if you're not in Europe or if you're not, like, a card-carrying, born-here European. Um, you should definitely participate to see, you know, how it is. Um, to like uh, just find out more about like what's going on in Europe right now. I'm definitely gonna uh, be participating to see what's going on and what people think. Um, and even more just to like just to see how the machine is trying to work, like what kinds of structures the powers that be are putting into place to get the kind of result, the, the kind of opinion making result they want. Um, Initially, there was this proposal from uh, Macron. Again, he's been he's been like in my thoughts recently. Uh, there's this proposal from Macron that we should, you know, see what the people say and give them some like um, options. And um, he said something like, "Without taboo and without limits." And then we just like based on this, we uh, we would have like the opportunity to change treaties and like to change the European Union. Um, and Ursula von der Leyen was like, yeah, yeah, we should do that. Like, we should, like, go all in. But then there was, like, a lot of backlash and um, the cautious nature of the European un Union won out. But Macron obviously is, like, a, a, a very pro-European politician, uh, very much uh, about that European future. Um, I, uh, like, I cannot say, I cannot stress this enough i detest the fact that uh his treatment of women is despicable his treatment um specifically of muslim women but um in terms of the future of europe and pushing that through he's been pretty he's been pretty much um one of the efficient people you know one of the personality people in europe one of the people who are going to in some way maybe indirectly but he will definitely be one of the architects whether we like him or not, of a future Europe. Um, a more united, more federal Europe, uh, the United States of Europe. Thank you for joining me. I really appreciate it so much. Um, wherever you are, whoever you are, until I see you again, take care of yourself and stay safe out there.